Now let me uh, introduce uh, Dr. Carl Dysonhaus, uh, who is a neuroscientist who got the uh, Kyoto Prize in the field of uh, biotechnology and medical technology, discovery of uh, optogenetics and development of casual systems neuroscience. Good afternoon, Dr. Dysonhaus. Good afternoon. It's a beautiful uh, time in Kyoto. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the the setting, the ceremony, mm -hmm. the 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 people, uh, the uh, the performances. Uh, it's been a uplifting and unforgettable experience, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, nothing like it uh, ever. As you know, you are the youngest laureate ever in the history of Kyoto Prize. I feel very humble when I look at the other uh, laureates mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to join that group is uh, uh, makes me feel very small. When did you make a decision as you'd move into the current job? Uh, well, my uh, I have a complicated job. Mm -hmm. Different parts of it came um, uh, became important at different mm -hmm. times. I'm at first and foremost, I'm a, a neuroscientist, and so I study the brain uh, it's for its own sake. Just mm -hmm. I'm curious about how it works. But even uh, before I became a neuroscientist, mm -hmm. I was a uh, biochemist, and I studied proteins and individual molecules and mm -hmm. how they work. And so a whole part of my, my work now is understanding proteins that mm -hmm. help us do neuroscience. I, I, the different parts are s always were alive inside me, and mm -hmm. I, I have to try to satisfy these different parts of my curiosity. I'm lucky because I can both study single proteins mm -hmm. and complex behaviors mm -hmm. all in the same job, mm -hmm. uh, which is a very special thing. So how do you see the future in terms of your, uh, your research area? So the, the future of mm -hmm. neuroscience is, is uh, we still have a long way to go. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a field where things will be uh, solved quickly, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is good. It gives us uh, things to think about and, and, and work on. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, also, I'm also a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we also have a long way to go in, in psychiatry. There mm -hmm. are very deep mysteries about how this, this, the suffering of psychiatric patients uh, mm -hmm. uh, arises from the function of their uh, brains. And uh, so we have, uh, sadly, a long way to go there. I think the, the future lies in, uh, in, a, in a systematic approach, mm -hmm. building deep uh, understanding of mm -hmm. how brain cells mm -hmm. connect together into mm -hmm. circuits and how those circuits cause sensation, mm -hmm. cognition, behavior and and that w the future uh, the hope for the future lies in mm -hmm. our uh, deep understanding of those basic questions mm -hmm. then informing our understanding of how it it goes wrong in, in disease and I heard you like fishing as your hobby right yes yeah yes would you please tell us about your hobby or uh, how you uh, take that hobby into your life. Yeah. So fishing for me is a way of, of, uh, of being out in nature mm -hmm. and connecting uh, with nature. Mm -hmm. uh, and it gives an opportunity to be active and to think, mm -hmm. but also to feel and be uh, in the stream, trying to think about how fish are thinking, think about how the insects are, mm -hmm. are, are being guided by stimuli in yeah, their environment. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, you know, I do mostly fly fishing, mm -hmm. uh, catch and release, mm -hmm. and, and there's a connection with the animal, too, mm -hmm. with the fish that is, that is quite profound also. Uh, so for me, that's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a special, uh, a very moving thing to, 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 to go fishing. Mm -hmm. I've taken my uh, my children fishing occasionally they they keep asking me to do more so mm -hmm. we will uh, we hope to find some time to do more of it in the future so how do you switch that mode mm -hmm. it's refreshing to switch modes I think mm -hmm. it's actually valuable it, it helps helps my science mm -hmm. to, to turn it off for a while and just just be a, a, a good good father mm -hmm. and 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 the other way around is good too uh, mm -hmm. 
So I think I learned that um, I'm still learning it. It mm -hmm. still takes some 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 practice. Mm -hmm. um, one way I learned to switch modes was actually in, in medical school. I was a uh, an MD PhD student, and so I was doing lab work and clinical work mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And those are quite different, also, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I still do that. I still see patients, but just just for um, you know a half day. And and even now, it's still it's a very different way of thinking mm -hmm. and being and communicating. You have to be aware that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. y you can't bring one style of thinking in, into another mm -hmm. realm where it mm -hmm. doesn't work. You have to be aware that you're yeah. changing modes yeah. and to do it well and then switch back. But if you're doing it uh, well, uh, it's very positive mm -hmm. for, for both, both uh, realms. Uh, it makes you better because you come back and you have new thoughts and new mm -hmm. ideas and mm -hmm. you're refreshed and excited again. Even though by now the, the technology has gotten quite uh, complex mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and spread around the world mm -hmm. and used for thousands of different studies, it started very small. Mm -hmm. It started with just a very simple experiment that probably cost a few hundred dollars uh, where I put a gene from algae into some neurons and, and stimulated them and, and saw a response. Mm -hmm. and, and that was uh, uh, so simple that uh, I just want to convey to everybody mm -hmm. that that uh, uh, you know do do simple things if they're beautiful and mm -hmm. and just uh, enjoy them and do them well and that's uh, that that's something that I think will sustain sustain you and even in difficult yeah. times.